Hi, fifth grade. Welcome to investigation eight. This is going to be part one of I'm not actually sure how many parts. I'm trying to get both myself and my graphs into the video, so it might have to sh shift every so often. But in investigation eight, we're going to talk about displaying data. Everyone needs their book. You need the printout from Jupiter and you need some scrap paper. We're going to make some graphs. So data that are gathered and organized may be displayed in various types of charts and graphs. One type of graph is a bar graph. A bar graph uses rectangles or bars to display data. Below we show the test scores and frequency table for investigation five and a bar graph that displays the data. All right, so you should see on page 417 that you're following along on the frequency table and then next to it you have a bar graph. You have the frequencies displayed as rectangles. Notice how the information from the frequency table is presented in the bar graph. The scale across the bottom of the bar graph, the horizontal axis, lists all possible scores on the test. It shows the same values as the first column of the frequency table. The scale along the left side of the bar graph, the vertical axis, lists the number of students. The height of a bar tells how often the score shown below the bar was achieved. In other words, it tells the frequency of the score. Great, so if you look on this graph that I have here, which I'm going to try and get so you can see. There we go. This is the horizontal axis, the one that is a horizontal line. We also call that the x axis. This is the vertical axis. It's a vertical line. We also call this the y axis. Okay, this is going to come up again often in math. So now we will practice making bar graphs using a new situation. 20 children in a class were asked how many siblings, brothers and sisters, each had. The data from their responses, as well as a frequency table to organize the data are shown below. So we have our number of siblings, two, three, zero, one, one, three, zero, four, one, two, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 0, 2, 1, 1. And then they have made a frequency table for you. So we're going to copy and complete this bar graph to display the data. So that is what I have done here. All right, so along my x-axis down here, do, 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 I have number of siblings, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then along my y-axis, I have number of students, meaning the frequency at which those number of siblings were achieved. So according to my frequency table in my book, four students have no siblings, seven have one sibling, five have two siblings, three have three, and four have four. So this is what my bar graph should look like for that information. Okay, you can pause here and make your own graph that looks exactly like this. I'm going to be really hopeful that you're going to do that. Uh, but if not, we're just going to move on. So we're back on page 418. Ooh, my hair is doing some weird stuff. In investigation five, we made frequency tables with data grouped in intervals of equal size. From that investigation, recall that ABC Market offered turkeys with these weights in pounds. 11, 18, 21, 23, 16, 20, 22, 14, 16, 20, 17, 19, 13, 14, 22, 19, 22, 18, 20, 21, Nope, that says 12, 25, and 23. So those were our weights of turkeys. So on page 419, here's the frequency table for these data using intervals of four pounds, starting with the interval 10 to 13 pounds. Okay, 
So we have that. To graph data grouped in intervals, we can make a histogram. A histogram is a type of bar graph. In a histogram, the widths of the bar represent the selective intervals, and there are no spaces between the bars. Below is a histogram for the turkey weight data. The intervals in the histogram match the intervals in the frequency table above. So you can see there on page 419, the histogram is a type of a bar graph, but it's a bar graph that we use for data that's grouped in intervals rather than data that has each discrete numerical value and there's no space between the bars. So for number two, we need to create a frequency table and histogram for the turkey weight data using these weight intervals, 11 to 13 pounds, 14 to 16 pounds, 17 to 19 pounds, 20 to 22 pounds, and 23 to 25 pounds. So I know that you're going to pause here and you are going to make a frequency table and attempt a histogram. And once you've done that, you're going to unpause and you are going to see that your information looks exactly like mine. All right, so here is my frequency table. I've taken my weights intervals 11 to 13, 14 to 16, 17 to 19, 20 to 22, and 23 to 25. I've gone through my data on page 418 down here at the bottom and I've found my frequencies, right? So three, four, five, seven, three. This is my frequency table using those weight intervals. Next, I've made my histogram. So along my x-axis, along my horizontal axis, I have my weight intervals. Along my y-axis, my vertical axis, I have the number of turkeys in each interval. Notice that there are no spaces between the bars on my histogram. So 11 to 13, three turkeys. 14 to 16, four turkeys. 17 to 19 is five turkeys. 20 to 22 is seven turkeys, and then 23 to 25, we're back at three turkeys. That is what my histogram should look like. So you can pause here and correct yours that you've done, and then we'll pick up again when you unpause. Okay. So we're back on page 419 down at the bottom. Another way to display these turkey weights, sticking with the turkeys here, is in a stem and leaf plot. The stems are the ten digits, tens digits of the weights. The leaves for each stem are the ones digits of the weights that begin with that tens digit. So here's a stem and leaf plot for the first row of weights in the list. Notice that the leaves are listed in increasing order. So a stem and leaf plot essentially breaks your data down into place values. The stem in these cases is the tens place value, the leaves are the ones place value. What you do is you only write the stem, the tens place value once, on the left side, and then the ones place values you do in ascending order on the right side. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't found a real life use for stem and leaf plots, but Saxon loves them and they will come up again and again and again, so we're gonna learn how to do them. So number three asks us to make a stem and leaf plot for the second row of weights in the list. And then number four asks us to use the information in the stem and leaf plots for the first and second row of the list of weights to make a stem and leaf plot for the weight of all 22 turkeys. So if you look back 
on page 418, the second row of data is 19, 13, 14, 22, 19, 22, 18, 20, 12, 25, and 23. So your stem and leaf plot for number three is going to look like this. As you can see, I have my stems on my left side and I have my leaves on my right side. The stems are one and two because all of my data points are either in the tens or the twenties. So the tens va place values for each are either one or two. And then my leaves are my ones place value. So where I have the leaf two on the stem one means the turkey that was 12 pounds. 13 pounds, 14 pounds, 18 pounds, 19 pounds, and 19 pounds. There were two turkeys that were 19 pounds in that list. For stem two, that means I've got the turkey that's 20 pounds, two turkeys that were 22 pounds, because I've got two, two, a turkey that was 23 pounds, and then a turkey that was 25 pounds. Okay. For number four, we're being asked to put together a stem and leaf plot for all of the turkeys listed on page 418. So here's what it would look like. Again, my stem on the left side is still one and two because all of my turkeys were either in the tens or the twenties. Here are my leaves. So 11, 12, 13, 14, 14, 16, 16, 17, 18, 18, 19, 19. That's what they mean. And then on stem two, I've got 20, 20, 20, 21, 22, 22, 22, 23, 23, and 25. If you look at your stem and leaf plot, this should match the frequency table as well. It's just another way of showing it, and it's a way of showing it broken down by place value rather than by frequency. Great. So. My video is about to run out of time, so this is part one. We'll do part two in just a moment.